Are you ready? No. Me neither. I'm, I have not prepared the examination problem yet. But again, once again, there will be three problems. One from chapter two, one from chapter three, one from chapter six. Okay? But of course, chapter one is incorporated in all problems. And all the appendix, appendix B, equation of, uh, equation of continuity, equation of motion, and equation for new law are given. Okay, everything are given. The only thing that we are not given to you is the equation for friction factor. Equation for friction factor like FK equal to AKF, the small thing that we will not give, give it to you. The examination is closed book, nothing is allowed, no calculation. You don't need calculator any, anyway. Everything will be in variables, just derivation. Okay? Should be easy, I think. Yes, it's always easy. All right, um, let's start for today. Today, um, last, on last week, we talked about energy transport in general. And we talked about uh, conductive energy transport, convective energy transport, and work. Right, there are three components in energy transport. Conductive, convective, and work. Conductive is represented by Fourier law. Convective is calculated based on kinetic energy and internal energy of fluid coming into the system. And then work that we consider will be flow work. Okay? Once you combine everything into combined energy flux, then you can put, put energy flux into shear balance, just like what we did previously in momentum balance. However, the equation for shear balance is normally in minus out plus generation equal to accumulation at steady state, accumulation would be zero. Okay? This is the equation for energy for shear energy balance. Please be notice here that we have energy in in terms of rate. That means the units of every term in this equation is supposed to be joule per second. So when you have flux, you multiply by area perpendicular to that flux, just like what we did pr previously. Okay? In and out, uh, combined flux going in and combined flux going out from your uh, shell. Then we have additional term, the rate of work done by external force. Just like in thermodynamics, we can have in and out here would be energy if you write down equation for first law from thermodynamics, you have energy in minus energy out plus Q plus work equal to accumulation or zero in this case at steady state. All right. In and out here would be kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy. All right. And then this work is divided into two parts, flow work and chaff work. And last week, we combined kinetic energy and internal energy to be combined flux, right? This is convective combined flux. If I use another color, maybe better. Now this part are convective transport for energy transport, right? And then this part is convective trans is conductive transport or molecular transport. And then we also incorporate flow work in this part. So all the highlight here, all the highlight variables are part or are already incorporated E or combined flux. So we have combined flux in, combined flux out. These two terms taking account of these four terms in just comparison between shear energy balance. 
and the first law of thermodynamics. So therefore, we have two terms left. First is this term, work. Work here from the first law. This is considered mostly mechanical work or shaft work. This work is considered as a result from external force. So this term is represented here. It's a rate of work done by external force. And mostly external force is related to gravity force, right? Then, um, this is a little bit unclear at this point, but potential energy is also a result from gravity force. Potential energy is MGH, and MGH always relating to gravity. So if we consider gravity force to be in this term, that means potential energy term and external force term are combined in this term. Okay? What about this term? Now, according to first law, energy cannot be produced. Energy cannot be consumed. Rate of energy production is trivial. It's supposed to be, it, it's not supposed to be here, according to thermodynamics. You cannot produce any energy, right? But in this textbook for transport phenomena, they incorporate this term, just this, it is supposed to be easier to understand. But in a sense, this term is relating to work from other kind of works except mechanical work. So we have all kinds of work, mechanical works, electrical works, radiation work, right? In this case, sharp work taking account for mechanical work only. So the rest of the work will be incorporated in this term. Okay? And I'm going to give you another an example regarding this term in a minute. But please keep in mind that this production term is not really the production of energy. It's basically energy transfer into the system in form of work other than mechanical work. Right? So every term in our first law, in our familiar form of first law, are accounted in this shear balance. All right? So let's start with the first example. The example is basically cylindrical rod. This is wire. And we can supply elect electricity into the wire. Let's say this one is copper wire or some sort of conductive wire. Once you supply electricity into this wire, what would happen? It's heated up, right? The temperature of the wire would, would be increased. Suppose the temperature of the air, ambient air is T0, and the temperature of the wire increased to some certain value of T. Of course, T will be higher than T0. So therefore, there will be energy transport. In which direction? What does it mean? In R, theta, or Z direction? In R direction. So therefore, there will be flux of heat transfer from center of the wire outward, okay? Now, the electricity that you give into the system is not a form of energy. It's just the way to transfer energy from surrounding into the system. So electricity is not mechanical work. It is considered other form of work, right? The problem give, gives you this equation. This is the rate of heat production or energy increase in the system by supply electricity. 
I here is a current, and K here is electrical conductivity. Okay. So before we start, we need to define our system. What is our system? Is it a wire? Or is it air outside? Or both of them? The correct answer would be, it depends. It depends on what the problem asks. If the problem asks you to find temperature profile within the wire, then the wire itself is a system. If they ask for in, uh, temperature of the ambient air surrounded this wire, the increase in temperature of air, then the air is system. But normally, we do not incorporate two things in our system, right? So either the wire, the wire here, or the air outside. For this problem, they ask you to find out temperature profile in the wire. So wire itself is our system, OK? Now, before we start, do we have conduction? In this problem, do we have conduction? Yes? Yes. The conduction takes place in which direction? How do you know? How do you, how do you answer my question here? In order to, to determine which direction you have conduction, you need to find out in the system the direction whereas temperature gradient takes place or temperature difference. Is there any two places in the system that you know definitely that the temperature are not equal? At the surface and at the core, right? At the core here and at the surface here, the temperature are not different, are not the same. So therefore, at least there will be conduction in our direction, OK? Is there any conduction in Z direction? Now it depends on your assumption. If you assume that temperature along Z direction is uniform, then there will be no conduction in Z direction, right? And normally, when you heat heat the wire using elect electricity, the temperature usually uniform along the length of the wire. So in this case, there is no conduction in Z direction. What about in Seda direction? None. OK? All right. Is there any convection? No. There is no convection simply because our system is solid. Solid cannot move. So if there is no movement of the media, there will be no convection. So no convection in this case. Okay? So 